Walk us through the moment we are in today with AI and maybe define for us what ambient AI is. Sure. So look, I think uh, AI just basically didn't work for a very long time. Uh, and we had a number of sort of AI winters uh, where the AI, it was promised to do a lot of different things, but it just didn't really work. Or it worked on a limited time scale, right? You started looking at things like being able to sort letters at the post office, sort of Andrew Ng's, you know, kind of early work and, and those kinds of things where it was able to like detect digits, right? And we, we don't tend to think of those things today as AI. We don't think of, you know, talking to your phone and it understands what you say as AI. There's like the old joke that once it works, it's no longer AI, right? And so that, that started to happen. And then, you know, we got to this MLOps phase where kind of everybody was betting that all these companies would have uh, you know, a thousand data scientists and be doing advanced machine learning. And it looks as if that's never actually going to happen. And the sea change was really first the release, I think, of, of stable diffusion as an open source. But then after that, the real big bang, the neutron bomb was what everybody knows at this point is ChatGPT, right? And that was a thing that even shocked kind of insiders that said, wait a minute, this stuff totally works in a way that's kind of completely unexpected right now uh, for many folks outside of the industry. I think that started to move us up the stack and the vast majority of companies and people are basically going to interact with AI at the API level, maybe the fine tuning level, although I'm not even sure how long the fine tuning lasts because as soon as you give me, you know, a complete document answering, you know, legal document answering model that I can give three examples to and it works, I'm not going to fine tune anything. I'm, I'm going to dump that as fast as I can because it's a pain in the butt. So I, I think most people are going to be functioning up the stack. We're moving into this era of applications and we're moving into an era where AI becomes a lot more ubiquitous and you have this kind of embedded intelligence. A lot of people are out there talking about AGI and all this other nonsense. Like, that's great. Uh, that's I'm a sci-fi writer. I love it. But like, it's just, it's not going to magic itself into AGI from transformers. But what we do have are these very like small contained intelligences that can kind of do very, very cool things that we couldn't do six months ago. They can go read a bunch of documents on the web and understand them and tell you what's in them, right? That you can build research agents and all kinds of cool stuff that you just couldn't do. So I see this intelligent layer, this, and I call ambient intelligence, just being embedded into everything, Every, uh, your supply chain, your, your doctor's visits, whatever, this kind of it's it's sort of like the the chatbots that didn't suck or the or the uh you know the intake patient doctor that didn't suck or like the call center AI that didn't suck, right? That'll actually be able to answer a huge chunk of these questions. When you have a problem on Slack, you'll pop it in there and the AI will kind of know the answer eighty-five percent of the time. And that's cool because this starts to give us this whole layer of intelligence. Some people worry about AI and I go, look, there's no industry on earth that would not benefit from being more intelligent. Nobody is saying, I really wish my supply chain was stupider. I, I really wish drugs were harder to discover and took more brute force time. They're, you know, they're all saying, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this in a more intelligent way? That's really what AMBI is going to give us. So I, I think it's a tremendously exciting time to be alive.